Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good morning to all of you. Prior to starting Mass, let us offer a prayer of spiritual communion. Let us pray, most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go to the altar of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now, let us turn unto the altar of God and make an examination of our conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God, I will offer the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us, O oh Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, O oh Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in love. The Lord is good to all, compassionate to every creature. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, 
in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are generous with your love and justice. Though we often fail to comprehend your design, guide us so that we may follow your holy will. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and art one God, forever and ever. On this, the 25th Sunday in the Ordinary, we take the first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy to our God who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heaven are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The graduate. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger, abounding in kindness. God does not always rebuke, nurses no lasting anger. He hath not dealt with us as our sins merit, nor equated us as our deeds deserve. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitless labor for me, and I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet, that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I will show mercy to whom I will. I will take pity on whom I will. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah, with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You too go into my vineyard and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon, and around three o'clock, and did likewise. 
Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more. But when each of them approached, they got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden in the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ and death is gain words taken from today's letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Philippians. And Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of God is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. Words taken from today's gospel according to St. Matthew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. We are taught in catechetical instruction that the moment that we are baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity, we become members of Christ's Church. In today's Gospel, I believe that Jesus was trying to emphasize that we are all called out by God to work in his vineyard as baptized people of the faith. His disciples and those who would later read this parable understood the importance of a vineyard. For a vineyard was one of the most important agricultural endeavors for the people of his day. And those who lived in that region understood that working in a vineyard, laboring in a vineyard, took time and patience throughout the year. I believe that one of the points that Jesus wanted to make with this story is not just by being called into the vineyard. It was also, I believe, to impress upon 
one's life that there are times in which people will accept that call. Some answer the Lord early in their lives and some come later in the dawn and the dusk of their life. The first truth to be said is that no matter when one is called, one is precious in the sight of the Lord. Even though the disciples were first called when Jesus began his ministry, Jesus was trying to tell them that they were not of greater value than the disciples who would follow him later. There are people who think that because they have been a member of a certain parish for a long time, the church belongs exclusively to them. There are times that with this type of thought, people seem to resent the intrusion of new thoughts, the infusion of new blood, who all come with different ideas of doing things in a different way. In the Church of Christ, seniority does not necessarily mean a place of honor. Paul makes this known as he battled with the Jewish elders who were strictly orthodox and exclusive and looked down upon the Gentiles, whom Paul believed could also share in the vineyard of Christ. To the Jews, Gentiles were considered inferior in all ways, but in the eyes of God, we are taught that we are all equal, for God loves all of us. As St. Peter teaches in Acts, and Paul teaches in the book of Romans. There is no partiality, and there is no favoritism in the eyes of God. There is an old Jewish saying that goes something like this. Some enter the kingdom of God in an hour. Others hardly enter it in their entire lifetime. In the city of Jerusalem, there were 12 gates. There were those gates in the east where people would come symbolically in the rising of the sun or in the morning or youth of their life. And there were also gates in the west, which is the direction of the setting sun. This is where a man may enter symbolically in the twilight of their years. Another truth in today's gospel is that God is compassionate to all, and he calls all those who were unemployed to work and labor in his vineyard. It would make sense that in today's workforce, that those who work more hours would receive a greater wage. But the fact remains is that in the vineyard of God, God needs laborers at all times, and His grace is the wage that He offers to all. Another truth in today's Gospel is found in the generosity of God. Do you remember the story of the widow's might? Those who were able donated to the temple. There were some who were quite wealthy and gave a portion of their wealth. And then there was that widow who gave a mite, the smallest of all coins, but what she gave was her all. It should be stated that it is not the amount of what is given for everything must be given out of love, but rather those who give selflessly and not selfishly. 
God does not look at the years we give unto him, but rather what type of service we offer. God does not necessarily look at the quantity, but rather the quality of service. As I mentioned, the wage that God gives unto all those who work in his vineyard, in his holy church, is grace. Grace is not accumulated. It is not something that can be earned no matter how many hours one may work. For grace is a divine gift from God that is priceless. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, I believe that all these lessons and found in today's gospel comes down to this. The whole point of working in the vineyard of God is found in the spirit in which it is done. To paraphrase Peter, he asked one time, and what do we get out of it? The true Christian works not for rewards or wages, but in the mere fact of the joy of serving God and his fellow man. This is what Jesus came to preach. This is why it is said that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And so, may we all take to heart this day as we reflect upon today's readings. The words that are found and in the words of St. Paul who writes to the Philippians, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether it be in life or in death. Let us all magnify the Lord as we work in his vineyard. Let us all conduct ourselves worthy as workers and laborers in the vineyard for the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is in that paradox that in the life of the Christian that all those who seek rewards will lose it, and those who forget about rewards will find it. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. The rich man's recompense leads to life. The gains of the wicked to sin. now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memories we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and the of the church. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, we offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving for all who labor in your vineyard. And we pray that we will receive our just reward. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Announcing the coming of your kingdom, Christ called his disciples and began his sacred ministry. And empowered by your grace and strength, may we faithful fulfill the ministry that you have entrusted to our care. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, 
with all the saints in the entire church. We lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place, for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox in Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. Let us remember in our prayers this day the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry and the homeless, the unemployed, all those who have suffered with the wire fires on the west coast as all those who have suffered with flooding in the south. Let us also remember in prayer all abused and neglected children in our world, all victims of violence both here and abroad, all those who suffer from the COVID-19 pandemic, all those who serve in our armed forces both here and abroad, and all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family. And so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that salt moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
all of you take and drink of it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all despair. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. 
Lord Jesus Christ. You said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make all of us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces that he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. received unto our lips, may we receive mentally, and may this simple gift become to us an everlasting healing. May your body, O Lord, which I have received, and your blood which I have drunk, cling to my innermost being, and grant that no sin remain in me. And who these holy sacraments have nourished, who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I, the Lord, am its keeper. I water it every moment, lest anyone harm it. Night and day, I guard it. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, Almighty God. May we who have been called to share in your Son's work and who have been fed at your holy table always remain confident in your justice so that when our earthly labor ends 
we may share in the joy of your kingdom. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you, through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten, not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, again I welcome you for our Holy Mass this day. It is my prayer that the good Lord might bless all of you and your loved ones on this special day. We will conclude this morning with offering a final prayer for our church, for one another, for our loved ones, that God's grace might ever be the reward he gives unto us. We will also remember our departed loved ones. May God be with you until we meet again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful, departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.